Welcome to the More Perfect Union, a podcast about the joy we get from American politics, or as we call it, real debate without the hate. I'm Greg Matuzak, your liberal Democrat from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Cliff Dunn, your Republican from Virginia. I'm Kevin Kelton, your moderate Democrat in Los Angeles County. And I'm DJ McGuire, your neoconservative libertarian from Suffolk, Virginia. And we want to welcome you to a special episode of A More Perfect Union, the post-vice presidential debate episode. A More Perfect Union can be found on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash more perfect union podcast. So we just finished watching the VP debate. Gentlemen, I have my opinion on who won, but I'm going to throw it to you first to see what your thoughts are. Uh, the first winner is uh, the Jim Beam Corporation, because I will be needing more of that honey bourbon to get through this season. Beyond that, it was not a Tim Kaine I expected to see. He was a little more argumentative. He was certainly more interrupting than I've ever seen him. But I am going to give the debate to Tim Kaine narrowly because he actually answered a couple of questions rather than just respond to them with something that he wanted to say. Uh, for the most part, Pence was more evasive, in my opinion. But it should be noted that usually when my view on these debates and these things is usually not the way the American people sees this. Uh, really, the, the first presidential debate was the first time that the American people and I actually agreed on what we saw together. So we may disagree on this. Uh, but for me, Kane actually answered a couple of questions. I thought his answer on faith regarding his death penalty conflict was very, very good. Um, so I'm going to give it narrowly to him. Wow. Or maybe you are just coming in line with the American public. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you're just no longer a contrarian. Well, Greg, what did you think? Well, I, I think, I mean, as the liberal Democrat, yeah, this might shock you all, but I think Mike Pence won. Okay, I'm going to be careful. I think Mike Pence won the night. I mean, he was really cool. He was collective. He never let Tim Kaine get under his skin. And he even did the Reagan line, there you go again. I mean, he was he was well prepared. Now, with that being said, once the fact checkers get a hold of everything, because he kept saying, Donald Trump never said that. Donald Trump, that never happened. Donald Trump never said that we want nu- he wants nuclear war f- heads to this and blah, 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 blah. Once the fact checkers and for the people who didn't actually watch it, which let's be clear, there's the four of us and <laughs> what, 15 other people. The rest of the country, when they just see the sound bites and they see the fact checking, I think it will go to Tim Kaine. Cliff? Depends on points. Uh, Mike Pence did did a good job. He, as Greg said, he didn't get rattled. He got a lot of points off, uh, you know. The, the, and I think Tim Kaine, in his own way, came off as rattled. Probably isn't the right word, but he was over eager, really jumping in a lot. It was it, as as ironic as it sounds. It was basically some of the Donald Trump mistake from last week that. The constantly trying to cut in, I that seems to have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. It it was interesting watching them both run over the moderator. Um, I have never seen a moderator th- so thoroughly turned into roadkill as tonight. <laughs> <laughs> My thing with Pence is that he never really answered a question that was put to him. And for the most part, Kane didn't either until the very end. In fact, they really spent most of the time just using the questions as... Uh, using the questions as breaks for them to breathe before going back into their talking points. Um, it was it it was hacker esque for those of us who remember Jim Hacker MP, who fl- <laughs> yes. flatly explained that what he does is you you take the question, you say thank you for asking the question, and you respond whether it has anything to do with the question or not. It doesn't matter, uh, and that is really what we got for most of this debate here. Uh, I, I I I think Tim was probably put off the fact that. Pence actually attacked Vladimir Putin. He probably didn't expect that from a Republican anymore. I think Kane should have pushed Trump's comments on Saudi Arabia getting a nuke more. Um, it would have been a perfect chance to ask a question of Pence whether he supports his presidential nominee, who thinks the kingdom of Saudi Arabia is worthy of a nuclear weapon, or whether he supports the Speaker of the House, who thinks the Saudi Arabia should be sued for its role in 9-11. But he and did just that, let Pence DJ, try to and that. every time he did that, Pence said... He never said that, which, of course, was a lie. So, 
Well, that, uh, what did you think, Kev? Yeah, go ahead, Kev. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I, I'm going to probably surprise one or two people and say that uh, while I thought Tim Kaine might have won on debate points, I agree that Mike Pence carried the night in terms of who's going to come away uh, with people thinking they were the winner of the of the debate. I think he's going to do better in the post-debate polls. He's already cleaning up in the online polls. Now, granted, they're not scientific, but I'm not sure that people... I was going to say, Trump cleaned up in the online yeah, polls, yeah, but, too. But, but the difference is, when you're talking about a Trump-Clinton debate or a, a Bernie Sanders-Clinton debate, you have all of their crazy fans who, you know, vote 50, 60, 1,000 times... People aren't doing that in a vice presidential debate. So while I'm not saying that the online polls are valid, they're not as, as skewed as they would be for you know a high, uh, high risk, high reward presidential debate. What did you guys think about the fact that where Kane would say Trump said this, Trump said this, Trump said this, and Pent would then say, "Well, these are just insults, and I, I just can't. I just, you guys are low, and this is, this is, this is just so hurtful to my delicate ears." And then the Kane response was, "These are facts." The, I, 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 and, he, and he would almost stutter over the disbelief that he would be insulted by these facts. I mean, at that point, it kind of lost traction, and every time he kept doing that, and he seemed shocked that he wouldn't say. Okay, you got me. I mean, it was there was no response to it except these are facts. These are facts. Well, uh, well, I, that was, a... I, I think that was part of how Pence did a really good job tonight is that he didn't let himself get pulled into fights he, I'll just say, probably couldn't win. Yeah, I agree, and and yeah. I think it's an astute point, and I agree with Cliff. Um, you know what? It, we're, we're in we're in a whole new political environment where reality and factual accuracy are not that important anymore. And most people who watch that probably believe Pence when he said Donald Trump never said that, even though he clearly did. But the problem with that is we know how that works from the first Gore-Bush debate of 2000, where Gore exaggerated some of the some of this the personal stories of people he used and then people and then the news the news media found those people and they contradicted him later you set yourself up for winning the debate night but then losing the rest of the week because people go back behind what you said and find out that it wasn't entirely accurate if pence just says oh well he never said that those are just insults the news media is going to spend the next three or four days reminding everybody that, yeah, Donald Trump really did say that. That's a good point. And, and then, you know what? And then right. the question is going You're to right, be, it, the question is then going to be, okay, is the truth an insult? And that question kind of answers itself. And as Donald Trump showed us more than anyone else, yep. losing the post-debate week is more, is more Trump damaging than losing the debate itself. I actually think there was one thing that Mike Pence did that I really think will hurt him and hurt him very badly. And there's no nice way to put this, so I'm not going to put it nicely. He actually defended the Charlotte cop shooter, the cop who shot the the victim who either was or wasn't yes, unarmed. Yes, we know who you're talking about. how you interpret yeah. the body cam. Right. I actually think the Democrats will probably use that over and over again in African-American communities to say, to say Mike Pence and Donald Trump didn't stand up for the victim. They stood up for the shooter. If the Obama coalition, as it is known, particularly... Is have, if they're having trouble with turnout, particularly among African Americans, they're not going to have trouble with turnout after they hear over and over again Mike Pence defend the Charlotte cop shooter. Yeah, I mean, what I will say is that while I agree with Mike Pence on defending the cop, I also agree that it was a tactical error. You know, again, first of all, I'm, I'm surprised how much we're all agreeing tonight. It amazes me, <laughs> e even considering the, the political posturing that has to happen in a campaign. You know, when Hillary Clinton said, I'm not saying that just police uh, have an implicit bias. I'm saying all of us do. The fact that they are trying to turn that into her somehow having slammed police or been unfair to police is beyond logical comprehension. And to hear Mike Pence, I think this might have been possibly the weakest you know, part of the debate for him, to hear Mike Pence try to turn that as... Democrats don't like police. Democrats are not for law and order. It's insane. And I don't know, you know why Tim Kaine or someone else never says 
Do you really think we're not for law and order? Wait a second. I'm, I just want to ask you, do you think that Hillary Clinton does not believe in law and order? Just say yes or no. Why can't they ever do that? I'll give you two reasons. One, because law and order has been perceived as a racial dog whistle ever since Richard Nixon dropped the term in 1968. So that's 50 years of history that we need to be careful about. Law and order was considered a racist dog whistle long before David Wolf turned it into a massively successful then television why show. Is it that's the 100% the first thing. Of the, uh, why is it 100% the of, the, of the registered black vote turning out this year? Because, and I'm not arguing with you, G.J. I, know I you know can, you're you not can, arguing with me. You can me. hear my and voice my answer, rising, but I'm, I'm arguing with my own party. It's okay. I'm arguing it's with okay. my own party. <laughs> and, my, and my answer to your question is, <laughs> after tonight, you may very well get that. Yes. Given the you know, stuff that's going on, just, the other I'm, the other thing. I, hang, okay. hang on, Greg, just a minute. I just make this one other point. The second reason is Tim Kaine and Hillary Clinton and most of the Democrats do not understand something about the Trump campaign. Donald Trump is not really Donald Trump is running the perfect campaign against David Dinkins, but David <laughs> Dinkins isn't on the ballot, folks. David Dinkins <laughs> was the African American mayor of New York in the uh, late eighties, early nineties. For those of you yes. who don't know. He was, he was the one who Rudy Giuliani beat in 1993 and began the string of five straight Democratic losses for mayor of New York City, which Bill de Blasio broke. That is context that is needed because that is essentially, if you look at what Donald Trump has done his entire campaign, it is essentially running against David Dinkins. And the problem is David God. Dinkins is not on the ballot. And apparently no one has told Donald Trump this. And unfortunately, no one told Mike Pence this either, which is why I don't even know if Mike Pence even knew who David Dinkins was. But he largely signed up for this, and we are where we are today, unfortunately. But I think, Kevin, to answer your question, I'll answer it again. This debate and some of the things that Pence said could very well get the African-American community up to Obama levels in terms of turnout and support for the Democratic ticket that you saw in 2008 2012, or at least very, very close to it, because— if I'm an Af- and I am not an African American, so I will acknowledge I'm speculating here, and I could very well be wrong. But if I'm an African American, I cannot be happy with anything Mike Pence said about this issue no, at no, all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll add to that. The other big mistake he said on this issue was when uh, the moderator asked him what he would say to uh, Senator Scott, who's been pulled over, who's a Republican right. senator, right. who's been pulled over seven times. He said seventeen you know, times. 17 times, excuse me, 17 times. And he said, uh, what do you have to say to him about this? And he was like, uh, let me tell you about something else. And let me dodge and deflect. <laughs> right. And he goes, but by the way, Senator Scott's a good friend of mine. He's he's that one black friend of mine that I have. <laughs> I mean, what, it was what, what, really, yeah. it was it, really it, awkward. And I yeah, felt it, terrible. It, I agree, Greg. It was the American version of, I'm glad you asked me that question because it's an important question that people want the answer to. Yes. And, and, and then suddenly she goes, by the way, the question's about Syria, which was another. <laughs> which neither of them answered. Which neither of them answered because they were talking about now, something completely different. We've talked about the uh, losers tonight, but you know who I think came out a big winner? Norwood University. Uh, <laughs> Is that some school in Massachusetts? <laughs> Who knows? It's a Norwood it's High not, School. It's not where they were. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was uh, for those again who didn't see the debate or maybe didn't catch it. Mike Pence accidentally called it Norwood University in his opening remarks. So, yeah. what else? Uh, well, I think uh, it was the, very interesting watching the Republican Party proclaim the winner this afternoon. Oh, about four hours before the debate started. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, we all know that the RNC will proclaim Pence the winner. The DNC will proclaim Kane the winner. You know, they would, you know, they would have proclaimed them the winner if they had literally fallen flat, face flat on the stage. But it's always interesting when the fiction that they are proclaiming it on the basis of what they saw is broken. It's always amusing. Did anyone see the Trump tweets? Yes, I was watching his live tweets. They no nothing out of the ordinary in there. Although you said you, you saw something interesting. Uh, oh, they for, were they were, you know there there were no gems and and but they were his standard boring. He's terrible. 
Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine is just a boring, you know. And and what was nice is that he was pretty pretty regular about it. Like terrible answer. He knows nothing. You know what? You know what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is a one man walking rapid response team on acid. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and he showed it again tonight. It actually got to the point where I think John Lovitz commented that Donald Trump is insulting Tim Kaine, as uh, Mike Pence is insisting that Donald Trump doesn't insult anybody. <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't have the I don't have the tweet exactly right, but it 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 is basically I think the thing that about tonight that I found a little sad, honestly, was that. Mike Pence is, or he was, your typical Republican. He was the kind. This was the kind of thing you would normally see from a Republican politician for about twenty, for about the last twenty to thirty years. And I think Mike Pence represents what was the tradition. What 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 we would expect from Republicans, and what we would normally see from Republicans including some things that we didn't like, but some things that we could admire. And even as as Pence was trying to do that, Trump is on Twitter essentially turning the whole thing into a massive dumpster fire. Yeah. And or, it was just really sad. Whereas I think uh, there was an Onion, the Onion uh, headline tonight. I'm actually looking for the exact wording. Essentially, their headline was, Americans tune into vice presidential debate to see what this election would look like if real people were running, or something to that effect. I, I blew it, but that was the idea. <laughs> Um, they worded it better. The Onion, read it. CNN poll has Pence says that Pence won the debate forty-eight to forty-two, which is that's not close. enough. Yeah, Quite it's very difference. close, and I yeah. don't think I don't think that's enough to change the dynamic. Have but you been to the uh, Politifact site yet? I mean, it's it's pretty brutal already. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure they're very busy. They um, had twenty people working, and I don't think it's enough. I mean, it was <laughs> it was brutal. There were a lot of pants on fires. No, I, I think they added a category called "Are you serious?" Um, <laughs> well, here's my only question: How many times did they catch Kane in a lie? Oh, okay. uh, Kane? Yeah, I'm I'm going down the list now. Let's see. Uh, I think once he said something that was like an untruth. Okay. Um, I think he had I think he had Pope underwear on, so anything he said was somewhat true. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't talk about the Catholic stuff in front of you guys. Unfortunately, uh, fine. American voters believe that PolitiFact is now owned by the Clinton campaign. So, uh. you know, they basically <laughs> they've poisoned the entire well of logic and reason. The thing about this faction and all this other stuff, look, the rest of the world acknowledges the fact that medias have bias. They have left-wing media sources, they have right-wing media sources, and they just go, yeah, they're biased. They have their own viewpoint. Let's have at it. The notion that media should be objective is a wholly American invention coming out of the New Deal and coming out of the notion that politics shouldn't be something we argue about anymore. It's a ridiculous anomaly that the rest of the world simply doesn't follow. Well, I, I'm I'm going to broadly agree with that, but I think there's also a... a I, I once referred to it, talking with some friends, as the red truth, blue truth problem, where... It's not just you know one's interpretation of events, but you know some things which you know are pretty clearly factual. We'll just we'll just go with recorded quotes get completely discarded by the side to which they do not favor. I do agree. And that's an issue. I want to say that while this election has reached a quote unquote new low, it's not like arsenic hasn't been seeping into the well for years. That's true. That's true. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't dispute okay. that. And unfortunately, I would also say, however, it is, do, it, is, it is driven in part by this notion from the post-war era that media can be objective. For whatever reason, the baby boomers actually swallowed that nonsense, uh, and then they pass it on to the rest of us. Uh, that should have been the first sign that the baby boomers were full of crap, and that includes my own parents. May they rest in peace. But, He's talking about you, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's not a baby boomer. Yes, I am young. technically. No, actually, I, yes, I, am, he is. I am the last. Really? I am the last year of the of the baby boom. Okay. What is the last year technically? He, he he's not a Generation X. That's for sure. <laughs> well, no. I believe that uh, the baby boom was forty five to fifty six. I believe. All right. I was I was thought it ended somewhere in the. Uh, I thought it ended earlier in the fifties, but like I said, the, the rest of the world doesn't play this game. 
I mean, Brit- British media is biased all over the place. They acknowledge it. They admit it. Um, you know, when I read the Telegraph, I know it is written. I know it is largely run by people who largely see the world as I do. And if I think I can't get through my our own my own cognitive bias, I'll look at the Guardian. I'll look at BBC if I think I need another perspective. But yeah, frankly, I mean, that's what we should be doing. We should be saying, okay, yes, the Post, the Washington Post is over here. The Washington Times is over there. Or actually, the Washington Examiner is better than the Times now. Washington Examiner is over there. Look at both. Get a balance. One will be credible on Monday. The other will be more credible on Tuesday. Americans assume that if it's reported somewhere, it must be true. And that just ain't so, folks. Do you guys read? Like, I, I actually take a lot of time to visit, like, Fox News and CSNBC and CNN. Those are, like, my... In the morning, I'll spend time looking at all three, besides my New York Times, because that's where it's at. Do you guys spend time looking at all different websites and uh, getting news from different sources, or do you have, like, your MSNBC or Fox News or stuff like that? I watch all three. Yeah, I watch... I mean, no, I try to avoid Fox when they're doing the not news, but the opinion guys... I tend towards the BBC and a somewhat lighter read of the British media. Part of it is, quite frankly, as silly as it sounds, they don't have the paywalls over there that we have over here. So True. that helps. You know, yeah. So, so, so the the irony there is that I am very selective about what I bother to read from the Washington Post or the New York Times. I pay very little attention to the American American broadcast media, but that's just because I haven't watched t- you know TV as such in years. Oh, you're um, kidding! It's the golden age of television. It's wonderful. Yes, on the internet. It's it's yeah, it's the golden age of television fiction. It's not very good for television quote nonfiction unquote. Well, they're yeah, not doing but... so well. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, Cliff, why don't you take us home? So please send us your questions at moreperfectunionpodcast dot com, where you can also find our blogs and host bios. Don't forget to rate us on and review us on iTunes, and if you enjoy political debates and would like to be a part of ours, join us on Facebook in our political discussion group, Open Fire. We are all there, and we'd love to see you there, too. Until next week, bye-bye. <laughs>